Hello everyone! Welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to be unboxing our January 2022 Palpable Packs Premiere Box. I'm super excited. Um, I've been waiting for this box for a while. Hoping it would get here in time to do for the um, first of the month. And here we are. Sharp implement. And let's unzip. There we go. Safety first. And let's see what we got inside. Ooh. They went with Christmas theme. Again, maybe they had extra. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, look at this. <gasps> look at this. That's so cute. Oh my goodness. I love him. Her him. Look. Beyond adorable. Beyond adorable. That's great. It's mildly poseable. Oh, look how cute. I'm gonna have to find a great home for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> we'll put him right there. Maybe right here where you can actually see his little shape. And then let's see what else we got. A new paintbrush. I do love, oh, a Princeton. Princeton Heritage number six round. Now, number eight is my Go to size. It's my favorite, favorite brush. But this is nice. Let's pop all this, this stuff off and set it over there. And they come with a little bit of um, stuff on them. So you want to take it and clean that off. I have water, clean water to the side over here. I'm going to just, there we go. Comes to a nice point. Ooh, and it's got good snap. So once again, this is the Round Princeton Heritage number six. Love it. And we have a colored pencil. Ooh, a watercolor pencil. Stabello. Aqu Aquarello. Aqu I can't, I can't already see that. Aquarellable. All right, I'm not going to play with that. Uh, good for paper, glass, plastic, and metal. Do we have a color on here? Maybe not. Everything but it looks to be blue. We'll swatch it. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, I was looking at getting myself some of these for Christmas this year. I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> um, I need this again because it's wrapped in plastic. This is fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited. I'm not really going to need the um, paper band. I don't tend to save those. Put that over there. Set that down. This is so nice. And it comes in a tin. These are uh, Neo Colors. The 10 Neo Colors. Uh, water soluble. Yeah, water soluble wax pastels. The, uh, by Karen Dosh. These are oh, really nicely packaged. I might save this. It's got the colors on the back. And lots of teeny tiny writing that I can't see, even with my glasses on. See, we'll just put that over there. Let's open up the tin. The tin is so nice. I really love the tin. Made in Switzerland since 1915. Very nice. It's, I got fake nails on, so opening these kinds of things are. There we go. A little problematic. Ooh, comes with a little vellum sheet. Um, over a hundred years, we have been accompanying you in the expression of your creativity. Your precious Karandash box and their bright colors have been carefully produced by our craftsmen in our unique manufacturer in Geneva. And it says it in the language. This is nice. I'm going to set that there. And we have some stickers. Is that what this is? Different kinds of things that you can get with it from them. Put that aside. And here are our colors. We've got a little 
just a little bit of padding. I'll take that out because that's just going to bother me. Um, if you don't, if that doesn't bother you, you could totally leave it in there, but it'll make pulling them out and using them problematic. But yeah, we'll swatch these in a little minute. I'm so excited. Very, very nice. Let's see what else. Ooh, slippery. My desk is at a snap. Let's scoot you up there. And for a surface, ooh, a media board. Media boards are really nice. Whoa. <laughs> Let's put this back down here. Ooh, debris. It's dusty. It's very dusty. <laughs> so, just get some of that out of there. I just vacuumed. I really don't want to vacuum again right now. It's not my favorite chore. There we go. Let's close this up and scoot it out the, out the way. And then here we go. We have Strathmore Mixed Media Boards. I've gotten variations of media boards in the past in other boxes, and they're really kind of a lot of fun to play with. I just don't buy them because paper's cheaper. There we go. So this is nice. Get rid of all our garbage. Okay. This is mixed media vellum surface. Kind of got a little bit of a texture to it. Very, very nice. I feel like I feel like you could probably use either side. Looks the same on both sides, but yeah, it's two sided. Nice. 100% uh, cotton surface, archival, acid free, two sided for wet and dry media. Very cool. So if you want you could do a piece like a practice pieces on on either side that'd be cool that's interesting how many do we get six boards that, that'd give you 12 surfaces and they're fairly thick i don't remember if these take water really well but we'll figure that out i'm gonna take one out but since they're two-sided we're gonna swatch right on here that sounds like fun this stuff, it gets everywhere. It's kind of like glitter sometimes. Not quite as bad, but I'm, I'm a disaster, so. <clears throat> so we have our, let's open you back up. Come on, there we go. We have our Karen Dosh colors. There we go. And then we have our paintbrush and our pencil and our little dude. And these, these guys, if anyone knows what these are for, here, let me see what we got going on on the website. Um, does it, these Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 Aquarelle set of 10, designed and made in Switzerland, the Neo Color 2s are some of the finest water soluble wax pastels on the market. Add luminous color and watercolor effects to your artwork with this assorted assortment of 10 Neo Color 2 watercolor soluble pastels from Karen Dosh. So they're considered pastels. They have a very velvety texture, ultra high pigment concentration, superior covering power, luminous colors, and excellent light resistance. I don't tend to worry about that stuff. Um, to activate the watercolor effect of these crayons, simply go over your drawing with a wet brush. Uh, you can also create a palette by laying down color onto a surface and picking up the color with a wet brush. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Um, and then going down, we have our Stabello uh, water soluble blue colored pencil. Let's, let's lay down this. Let's lay down a little bit there and then a nice dark patch there. It's kind of smooth. It goes down really well. I just got a nice set of water or colored pencils too. So 
paintbrush is right here. <laughs> I don't know what I was looking for. Let's grab a paper towel for blotting. I have a wide array of supplies off, off to the right over here. Grab a little water. And, ooh, ooh, that's beautiful. That's like dreamy. I love how that goes down. I have Stabello colored pencils too, a small set of them. Maybe I'll break those out. I bought myself a set of inexpensive colored pencils. Ooh, look at that. That is gorgeous. But blue, like, let's color it. This just says it's blue. Indigo is my favorite color, so. Well, it kind of travels a bit too. Let's see how light we can get it. Pretty light. It moves. So you could drag it around a bit like watercolor. That's nice. And I like that textured look on the surface. That's cool. Okay. I'm getting excited. <clears throat> getting excited. A little bit of texturing going on on the surface. Digging it. Let's swatch out these guys. They're not like in rainbow order for me. But let's see, I will put the white <clears throat> over here, but that's just me. We'll just go across. This is our special colors. Yellow. It's just yellow. A little like medium pressure right now. A little bit of medium pressure, light, super light pressure, and the te the paper's textured, so it's leaving lots of white. And then we'll put down. We're gonna just put down all the colors, and then we'll play with them with water. See what they do. There. That is. Oh, nice. They have little like. That's cool. They have little, let's focus on this, please. Oh, too much going on. There we go. Little tear off tabs, scallop cut for tearing off when you get, when you get low. That's nice. That's a nice detail. I dig that. <clears throat> and this one is straight up orange. It doesn't say straight up. It just says orange. Scarlet, there we go. Kind of medium hard pressure, lighter, super light. This color is interesting. Purple. Mm. My brain says this is fuchsia, but that's okay. Purple, hard to light pressure again. And then we have violet. There we go. Hard to light pressure. Ooh, escapee. <coughs> and this one is cobalt blue. Hard to light pressure. You think I'm going to texture the paper? Or this, the board. Let's see. Emerald green. To light pressure. Nice. And then down here we'll do our other colors. The banging around you're hearing is the kittens. This is brown. Hard to light pressure. Good, and then black, yes, just black. And you can sharpen these too, if you have a sharpener. Um, Lindsay Warwick on the Frugal Crafter, her channel, she has a nice review on these if you're interested in an in-depth review. And uh, she says to sharpen so you don't waste them because they're water soluble, get a palette and sharpen them into like a square of a palette. And then you'll have, you're not wasting any. 
you'll have a palette because they're rewettable that you can use to do paintings with. And then white's white. I I have a problem with swatching white, but we'll do it anyway. There we go. And then water. And we have yellow. It's, ooh, that is intense. Look at that color payoff. That is awesome. Wow. I really like that. I thought I would. I, I looked at the bigger sets on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> and bounced back and forth between colored pencil set for myself for Christmas and these. And I went with colored pencil instead of these. I'm so happy I did. I got a little set that I can play with for a while and see if I want the bigger set. Ooh. Okay. We'll see what that does. Red. Or, or scarlet, rather. Very nice. I like it. Okay. And then purple. So you can pretty much use these like you would um, watercolor pencils or any of your watercolor mediums. For me, that's amazing because I, my favorite is watercolor. I do other things, but my favorite favorite is watercolor. Oh, I like that mixing right there. That's cool. Maybe we should do a little bit of that in a minute here. After we get done swatching. That's pretty. I dig that. Let's do a little more. Oops, touch more water. That's kind of a lot of water that I'm putting on there too, you guys, just so you're aware. Kind of filling up the brush a bit. Because these boards really, really soak up your water. And we have our brown water. It's a pretty brown. And then black. Push a bit. Drag them down. This brush is really nice. It's got good snap. It, it goes back into shape really, really, really nicely. You don't have to work to get that point back. That's that's awesome for me. Let's do a little. Let's do a little, oh, the white is here. Maybe grab a little bit of, oh. The white kind of layered over that. Do you see that? Let me take the white and bleeds in. Mixes together well. Ooh, okay. So you could put these on like a piece of, scrape it onto a palette and wet them down and straight up use them like you would watercolor. Entirely rewettable. Mix them together. Grab some of that purple, some of that blue. That's pretty. A little more purple. Straight off the. That's nice. I like that you can do that too. A little bit of blue. You can get some really nice watercolorish effects. Digging it. Digging it. All right. Okay, so what should we do? I wonder. I wonder. Ooh, it's still a little wet right there. 
Ooh, layered. That layer is really nice. I like the yellow peeping through like that. It's visually appealing for me. Yeah, I dig it. And if you drag it through where it's wet, you get a lot of pigment lay down. Drag that through. Kind of stays put though. That's interesting. Do you think? Do you guys think that's interesting? I think that's interesting. But it doesn't want to move around a lot. Huh. Cool. Noted. All right, what are we going to do? Let's draw something. Let's. I really want to see. Well, I mean, let's go typical. Yellow. And blue. Make great. I really want to see. How they play together. Good. Well, you can get a pretty, in pretty intense green. Pretty green. I could sit and play with color like this all day. It's so relaxing. And two of really vibrant yellow green. Nice. Drop on some of our colored pencil blue. Nope, that's not a good idea. Noted. Okay. All right, I'm just messing around at this point. Let's set this aside and get another board. Fresh and clean. Like it. What should we, I think we'll sketch with a pencil. Can we grab a reference photo? Do we have any prompts? Blue. There we go. We have, we usually do. Oh, okay. Our prompts for this month's box are mountains, broken, moon, and bear. I am leaning towards mountains. I, I do like drawing bears. <gasps> And the moon, but I don't feel like doing those. So let's let's pop up a little reference photo, and I get my reference photos usually from Pixabay or Unsplash, both royalty-free websites. So you know, note to self. Let's do a little. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, da, da, da. Sifting, sifting, just for a little bit of, um... Oh, this one's got a castle in the background. Cool. I'm gonna like that, because... Why am I not logged in? I'm always logged in. What's happening? Ah. Oh. I'm... Oh. Thank you. This is so annoying. I'm not a robot. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Let's go ahead. I don't usually do this part on video. I, I usually save it for. Let me grab. I have an entire. I have an entire thing of pencils I bought on sale at the art shop when they were going like cleaning out stock so I have already sharpened ebony pencils H pencils and um, number twos ready to rock and roll for any all of my sketching purposes this is a spectrum pencil pro number H it did not come in the box I'm just using it to 
lay in our scene here. We've got a bit of a tree happening over here. Evergreen, pine, um, whatever you want to call it. I'll just get in the basic shape of it, poking into the scenery right here. There, and then we have a little bit of a hillside here coming down, and it's a bit of a winter scene. Let's see. What would be interesting is the white, because there are a couple branches coming up that are covered in ice. They look like they're super crystallized. So we're gonna drop those in here. Foreground peeping through like that. And in the background, we have all kinds of, um, I wanna say Christmas trees, but pine trees. Pines, evergreen. Let's see. And then sprinkled throughout them are bits of deciduous trees that are crystallized and iced. And then as we get further away, we have a few more pines, super tiny, poking out between mostly white through here. But it's not white white, it's like a gray white. So we need to find it over there, over there. Let's see. Couple little ones through here, like that, and then in the distance we have a hilltop, like so. Like that, lots of lots of different colors going on. Blocks of color. And that's how I have to think about it, otherwise I will get lost in details and I'll, instead of drawing colors and abstract shapes, I'll be drawing um, trees. And you can't tell that they're trees at all. So there, and then in the midst of this is the silhouette of a castle. And I just want to get the, the basic shapes. What's going on? That. And a little bit of dual ground stuff happening here. And this is shadow. And this is pretty shadowed. See, here I go. Details instead of just sketching in the shapes. <laughs> Anybody else have that that tiny issue? Oh dear. Sorry about the noise. They're in their kennel back there messing around. I leave the doors of the kennel open so that they can get in and out during the day because that's where their food and litter is. Um, I'm assuming windows and rooftops and darkness right there. And then in the very background, back here, are distant mountain shapes. Technical terminology mountainy shapes. Like that. And then it gets all soft and like dreamy and kind of leads up into the sky, which is super cloudy. And I'll link the reference photo below so you guys can play with it too if you want to. Um, it is, once again, I'm on uh, pixbay.com. You can see the artist, photographer. It says Nord Sahir, N-O-R-D-S-E-H-E-R. Um, he has 272 images. Wow, that's a lot. I started putting images up on there too. Anyone can put their photos up to share with other creators 
And I thought that it would be a good idea, because I kind of take quite a few photos when I'm out and about, to just throw them up and, uh, all right, I'm going to stop playing with this pencil. Put that down. All right, we have our layout. And we're going to go in with, let's do a little, hmm. I don't know what to do first. I think we'll use these guys first. I want to do, let's see. I feel like I need something to mix on. I'm gonna take our swatch board and flip it over and use it as a bit of a palette. I feel like I wanna see what that will do to the green before I get too carried away. Darken that up nicely. It does. Okay. Maybe we'll do that. That's not terrible. Right? Kind of a green gray color. And let's go ahead and clean the brush. Set that down. And I'm going to drop this green on where I want. Oh, that's what. Do you go like that? The tops of the trees are. And since the color payoff is kind of intense, I'm just going to go right with that. And that there. Some here. Like that. Then along this edge, we've got a bit of color blobby situation going on. I want it to be tree esque, not like terribly defined. Right? Yeah. All right. And then got a bunch of them. Just there we go. A little more defined in the front. And then this one here. Let's put that one there-esque. And then these guys are Pretty close. We can go ahead and maybe drop in the shapes like that. This guy is pretty frosty tipped as well. Let's go in and just scribble in some color. Like that. And then the white looked pretty opaque, so maybe we'll try to go over the top with the white. How's that looking? Interesting? Is it feeling like a landscape yet? <laughs> you feel like a landscape with a castle in the back in the background? Because that's what I'm going for, you guys. Alright. There. Foreground tree. And then let's see. This is, this is, I don't think I want to do that direct like that. I want to go in a little bit of, there we go. Kind of like you would with watercolor. Okay, I like that. Let's wipe the area down to there. Let's see. Uh, 
Bends and come. Super distant tops of trees. I'm digging this brush. It's really nice. And where I would normally um time lapse most of these videos for unboxings. This this portion I would time lapse. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm going to go ahead and leave it real time like that. That's looking all right. Let's see, maybe a little more gray here. Get this black but grayed out. And just drop it in right here. Like that. Keeping in mind that this is very distant and I don't want it to be too detailed. Blurry is best. Cool, I did that. And then on this side, it's a little less dark in a general sense. We're going to lay down some water. Kind of a lot of water. I mean, if we're going to use these boards, we might as well put them through their paces, right? And see what kind of effects we can get. I'm digging the textures on the boards, so that's cool. Mm. Done. Done. I mean, it bleeds nicely, which is cool as well. This brush is really nice. This might become one of my favorites. But it is a Princeton, and I do like the Princeton brushes a lot. My favorite is a Princeton Neptune round number eight. And then here, let's get in here and do our little, little bits like this. Give the background a bit of interest. Maybe a little bit more green. Put down some more green. Grab it. I'm digging how you can use these just like if you were a watercolor. And I like how they're bleeding around like things. They bleed around really nice. That into that. Which I'm digging. And for tree shapes, I mean distant tree shapes, that's a really good effect. I dig it. Alright. Let's put some more green over here. It's a little too gray for me now. Cool. That looks awesome. Digging it. I'd like to get some blue down. And I'm wondering, wondering, wondering. Let's just let's just wait before I get carried away and do that. Let's do this foreground situation. Too much water. Vibrant, vibrant trees. It's too vibrant. Let's do a little, little bit of this green gray mixture. Let's put some more black down. Can I do that? More black, so it's way too vibrant. Draw a little effect going on. That was blotting. Blotting. Ooh, nice. 
moved it because I've got too much going on right here. And I'd like to put that up. Uh, maybe we can leave some of the texture of the green here and there. The crayon. Maybe not wet it all out all the way. So that's interesting. There we go. These guys. Right out of it. Tapping just a teensy bit of tapping in with the black. Let's see what that does. Nope, not digging that at all. Kind of getting carried away with the uh, details. Right. I'm going to take this white. Um, I'm going to lay some down. going right over those other colors. Maybe they'll bleed in, maybe they won't. And they could go over the top too, like can you get some highlights going on over here on the edge of this crispy spot where there's a dot of snow going on between the trees and that one settled right in it settled right in there <laughs> oh well that's fine we'll let it be and then this is very green gray with white topped trees so let's do that Tree there and then the same here. Pushing up, pushing up. Cool effect. Textures are nice. Pushing up. Give it a little twist. Subtle, but I'm, I'm digging it. It's too dark there. There. Yeah. Cool. Now these, the front right here isn't white, but it is light in the foreground right there. Maybe we can take our pencil. Do a little bit of light, light, light pencil, because remember the payoff was intense, right? So much. Okay, let's dry the brush off a little bit. Soften it. Way back in the distance, so we don't need details. Just need blobs of color. There we go. Alright, I like that it's standing under bits. Maybe we'll go in a little bit in a minute with more. 
<sighs> this foreground. I need to. I need to address the foreground. Let's... Back in there. Okay. Big enough. Play with much water. There we go. Scrub and scrub it around. Grab a little more of this black gray. Mm -hmm. Just drop it in a couple areas like that. Maybe a little bit of blue as well. Why? Added interest. And it might look cool once it's like wet and allowed to bleed, bleed around a bit, right? Let it blob of water right there. Are we liking that? Kinda, yeah. Kinda. Move those black blobs around a bit, like that, and then bring the color out a bit. Kind of a little abstracty piece, right? Abstracty. <laughs> Technical terminology. Yeah. And this brush can take a beating, I tell you what. A little bit more blue down there. Oh, I'm digging that. All right. Anyone else digging the effect of how this is turning out? Mm -hmm. I am. Bit of dry brush effect. Texturing on water. Can I dig at that? Yeah, all right. I don't want it to be crisp white because it's just not, doesn't look right. Gray through here. Let's put down some more black. Not that much. Okay. Bring this hillside into like blend it together a little bit because this this section is part of that back back there a bit. See how the brushes fanned out. This brush can take a nice beating. I dig that. I like a brush that can, um, you can be rough with it and it, I mean, over time it'll probably destroy it, but, um, 
for my purposes. I dig it. All right. We're looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. Well, that one's really dark, but that's okay. You know how you balance that out? You put a couple more dark ones in in other places. Okay, I'm going to all dark paint. And come down here. Maybe blend a little. There we go. A little darkness there. Maybe put a couple here. at the bottom. That looks great. All right, let's see about this background and then these twigs. We might, they might work out, they might not, but it is not white behind them at all. It's more green gray. It's still green gray. Like so. Um, I don't know what else. That way, when we layer the white over the top, I'm going to let this part dry a bit while we muck about with other sections. And then we'll go in over the top and see if that white is opaque enough to put over, over the top and, and convey those brisk white twigs coming over the top. We'll see how that works out. It's all experimental, right? Okay. Sky. Sky. Let's see. Thinking. Mountains and sky. This is that blue pencil. Mm -hmm. Distance. Super just grazing, grazing over the top. Because I don't know how intense this is going to be. Um. Ooh, it's going to be intense, you guys. Okay, let's stop. Stop, stop, stop. And leave that all out. Come down. Not really, but that's okay. We can, we can work with that. It is very intense right now, so let's grab blue black. Really thin. There we go. And come over too much water. Over the top. Like that. Spread that out. Grab more color. And let it bleed a bit. Put a little gray in there. Like it. Like that. That's pretty cool. Right. Too much water. Way too much water. Which I do from time to time. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see if we can get some subtle with the blue. Touch of black to make it gray out a bit. Swap 
Blue black clouds in the distance. Right. Gray here and there. Pretty good amount of water. Blue gray and more intense. Drop it on. It's interesting, right? There's a bit of a horizon going on right here. Blend it out a bit right there. I like it. Blend that a bit. And water. What are we thinking? It's pretty good, right? So far, I mean, I'm digging it. Let's do a little bit of direct work with this one. Okay. Hard, hard pressure. Super hard pressure. Is that going to be effective? Not really. That's okay. That's all right. And there's cloud like back here, so... Ooh. I'm liking that smoothness over the top of the dropped in color. Just like coloring in, right? Soften that out a bit. Get rid of some of the color that's on there. Come back here. Like that. I'll kind of soften that a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Like that. I like that. Okay, cool. I really didn't want that blue to be that intense, but it's fine for now, I guess. And maybe we can soften some of the intensity of these greens. Going over it with the white. Make it less vibrant. Kind of spinning this as I go. Dragging it around, no particular order. Less intense, which I'm digging. All right, kind of pushes them back a little bit, makes them more froggy. There we go, and then these guys can be less intense. Like that, and then in between some of these, just to give them a little bit of shape and definition. Like that, are we digging it? And one more fine 
point, I would like to make this a little more prominent here and there. Okay, all kinds of quiet on you guys. Sorry about that. There. And there's our castle in the background. Castle esque, right? Because I imagine, I mean, if you're right up on it, you don't see that all the dates. But when it's super far away, you get a feel for it that it might be a castle, right? And then maybe a little bit of detail. I have to put this blue in other places so that it makes sense, right? Why is there a bright blue castle in the middle of the green painting? What is happening? Well, maybe they have blue stones and they wanted to shine out like a gem. Right? Everybody's welcome at this castle. A little bit of texture. There. Um, I want to put some of these colors in, but that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think that's good. I'm digging how it turned out. Especially for a super quick, um, super, super quick piece. We have our Karen Bosch. Let's put these guys back in their case where they belong. Oops, white, blue, and green. Wow. There they go. They're in their case. We got our cool. Princeton Neptune paintbrush and our pencil, our blue Stabello watercolor pencil, which I don't normally use watercolor pencils at all. Um, they're not something I've played with a lot. And then we got our cool little, our cool little guy. He's so great. I mean, he's so great, right? Nice touch. I dig it. And then we have our Mixed media boards from Strathmore. We've got six of them and you can play on both sides, so that's awesome. Yeah, I dig this box a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me go through all of this. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!